Hello, and welcome to the Drum History Podcast. I'm your host, Bart Vanderzee, and today I am joined by Chris Ruscio to talk about all the gear of Mr. Lars Ulrich. Chris, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for having me, Bart. Super, super psyched to be here and do this with you today. Me too, man. Uh, this is like, uh, this is a, we're in for a long uh, journey, I would say. <laughs> this is very likely going to be a multi-part series about the, the gear of Lars. I've learned that from the Neil Peart series where it's like, it's silly to try and jam everything into one episode because you miss stuff. And Lars has a lot of, uh, you know, different drum sets, yes, oh, yeah. but there's a lot of nuance to everything. A lot of variations, um, yeah. Yes. So if you're on YouTube, you can you're you're going to see all this. But if you're just listening at home, I'm going to say that uh, Chris has provided. I don't know if it's the exact number, but roughly around 310 <laughs> photos uh, to me through through Dropbox that are. More, I, I mean, I've looked at Lars' photos before, and I've never seen a lot of these. So, uh, first off, thank you for doing that. Thank you for we've been working on this for a while. So, thank you, Chris. Oh, no problem. It's uh, it's 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 really fun to do something like this. You know, I've uh, yeah, like I told you before, I've built a couple replica kits, and I've always wanted an episode like this to you know see, hey, what is this guy doing? What what's this? What's that? Something to help me along, but uh, yeah, nothing really exists. We're gonna do it today. So We're doing it su today. super psyched about that. <laughs> yes, so I am super psyched. I'm psyched about every episode, but this one in particular, I love these gear episodes. Before we start, I want to give a big thank you to Billy Harrington, uh, yes. who's been mentioned on a number of episodes. I know the Bonzo guys, uh, George Flutus and Terry Keating are big fans of his, and he's a very knowledgeable guy. He reached out to me saying, "I if seeing if I had more info about his Lars retail like Art Star Two right. series kit, which we will talk about that later." And I said, "No, but I want to do a deep dive into Lars, and I can't find an expert." You know, kind of when I I, I I looked a little, but he said, "You got to talk to Chris. Find Chris on Instagram. I found you." Here we are right now. Um, and let me say as well, I know other people have suggested a Lars episode in like YouTube comments and through email, but Billy's the one who got us connected. So everyone else who suggested Lars, thank you very much. Awesome idea. We're here. We're making it happen. <laughs> so uh, Chris, as you mentioned, you are an enthusiast. You've uh, a very seasoned enthusiast of Lars. You just saw him live, which uh, we'll talk about that as well. But uh I'm trying to think how we should start. Maybe we just jump in here. We got a lot of ground to cover. So you want to just jump in and start with the earliest uh, Lars kits and, and go from there? Let's do it. Let's do it. Uh, we're better to start from the beginning. So yep. let's strip out all the endorsements. You know, let's get rid of the fame. There's no Metallica at this point. <laughs> <laughs> so the first kit, the first kit is a little weird. Uh, it's been mentioned a lot, but there's really no solid information on it. I've had a hard time myself uh, finding information on this kit. So way back in uh, 96, there was a VH1 episode. It was Metallica behind the music. There was actually, you know, the same picture I gave you today was brought up and it was discussed, but never in detail. Um, you know, Modern Drummer issue 87, Modern Drummer 96 brought it up, but it's never been really explained. I mean, there's also a YouTube video, Guitar Center, where Lars said, you know, it was like one rack tom up top, two floor toms, a kick. The mm. pic, the picture is kind of you know it it doesn't reflect that. It's what everybody's been saying. But so what I found out these are this is a mixture, kind of a, a thrown together kit. Um, I see a premier tom. I definitely see a pearl tom. Yep, old like, with the with the script yeah, kind of with logo. the old kind of yeah. the gold script on there. Yep. Uh, Definitely looks to me to be about 60s, uh, 1960s model. It's got that yep. uh, white marine pearl color, kind of the thing they were doing in the 60s. Sure. So from the picture, I see a 12. It looks like a 12 by 9 to me. Uh, I think I see a 13 by 10. And that's that's all we really get in the picture. I know there's a, the kick drum from that episode, uh, the VH1. It was panned out. It was the same color. The colors matched the toms, so maybe we got a Ludwig kick drum there. Uh, he did mention a Slingerland, so maybe we have a Slingerland floor tom. Uh, I can't, you know, I can't say in a hundred percent fact that's what we have. No, but it's but, it's it's cool. It's and it kind of if you if you look through and you you kind of peek through, it looks like also a white marine pearl floor yeah. tom and yeah. and a and a metal snare. 
And we're talking, I mean, so Lars was born uh, December 26, 1963 in Denmark. Chris and I talked before, we can't really do both a biography episode and a gear episode. So this is really more about gear. But if I had to guess, I mean, he looks like he's about seven or eight years old in that picture. I, I mean, right. do we know an age range? Or? Well, from the same interview, Lars mentioned he was, he was, his grandmother got him this kit and he was about 14 when he got on his knees and begged her for a kit and then it showed oh, up. Wow. So I looked at that picture and it, it kind of, you know, he doesn't look 14 to me. He looks so, younger, but he does. He's, a sm- he's a smaller guy, I guess, in right. stature. And, so it, yeah. it, it could be. So I'm estimating, you know, 1977, this kit is from, um, okay. I, I could be wrong, but I don't see anything out there in all my years of research, anything else that would, you know, be his first kit. I think this, if I'm a betting man, I would say this is the first one. This is the one that probably uh, when James was talking on the same interview, James is like, you know, he had this kit. It wasn't that good. He hit the symbol. It would fall over. You know, I think Rob McGo- Ron McGovney had mentioned something about it. So I think this is the one. I'm pretty, I'm pretty confident this is the first kit. Yeah. So, but and it's interesting because there's also another black and white photo where he's playing uh, traditional grip. He looks young. Yeah. I mean, he could be 14 there, but holy cow, he looks like a younger right uh, guy. Yeah. Could it be a could it be another snare that you know friends or family members? We don't know. So sure. This early, it, it's kind of hard to find any 100 percent rock solid information. So yeah. Okay. That's cool. So so what's our next kit that we go to? So now. Right before Metallica started, like I said, he, he went away for the summer. He came back. Uh, that's when he called James in October, and they really got the thing kicked off. So our next kit, um, there's a couple variations of this kit, but this is a Camco Renaissance. Now, Camco, I believe it was a, it, it was a 70s company. It, was, uh, in, it started in California, but it was bought out. Now, Camco was bought out by Tama. And I believe the hardware was bought out by DW. Yeah. So he described it as a used kit. He got from the same place, West Coast Drums. Um, It's a renaissance. You can look. It's a natural maple. And you could tell from the inlay on this kit that this is a renaissance. I believe they were made in Pennsylvania at the time. It's it's a six-ply maple. And it was described as, I I believe it was described as a six-piece, but I'm seeing more. You know, I'm seeing four rack toms, I, I believe a 12 by 9, probably a 13, 14, 15, and we have one floor tom. You know, I, I didn't see, there, were, there weren't two floor toms at this time. So I'm going to imagine the floor tom was probably a 16 by 16. Sure. Uh, you probably had a 15 by 13 in there. And we see the snare, same thing, Camco Renaissance. So it's a, yeah. late, it's a late 70s model. I am seeing three crashes and a ride. Uh the symbol brand, I can't, you know, there's really no history on that. I, I can't see any labels on the symbols. To me, it's kind of got that Zildjian shape. I mean, you know, as a drummer, sometimes you could pick out shapes of symbols. Maybe that Zildjian Peisty shape. Yeah, they're not really the brightness of Peisty's. Right. But, uh, and I mean, I guess if it's, what what year is this that we're talking here? 81, 82? So 80, 81 is when they hook up and get together, you know. So that's right when Sabian would have like yeah. become a thing. So probably not so Sabian's. I, can, I, I really can't tell 100% what kind of symbols. Uh, from the pictures, I can tell you he's using Yamaha hardware. Probably Yamaha 8000. That was that was a thing back then. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I'm, I'm pretty confident they're Yamaha's. Well, I would just throw out there that I, before looking through your folders, had no idea that uh, Lars played Camco. I think the history of Camco is extremely cool uh, and just just very interesting with the turret lugs and George Way. And I will, whenever possible, I like to refer to people. Joe, Joe Luoma did an episode about the history of Camco, which people can check out. Um, and then I had Don Lombardi in who talked about the, the, the split with Camco and buying the hardware. So... Everyone can check that out. But I mean, Camco are awesome. They're so rare and valuable nowadays that yeah, pretty cool. <laughs> Wait, Do we know where that kit is? This uh, kit? Well, that kit was stolen. <laughs> oh, that's a boy. little that. Imagine that somebody's got that kit nowadays. <laughs> Man, that's a kit to have. Terrible way to have it. But but yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get into that a little later. But when you look at that 
that first cam coat, that's a really, really nice kit, especially for Beautiful. somebody starting off uh, the six ply <laughs> yeah. maple. Um, just a really nice kit. If I had it nowadays, I'd be proud to have it. So, oh man, you know, really nice that's a, kit. The work of art with the inlays and everything. Yeah. Uh, was he playing a double pedal at that point? No, no information, no history on that. I believe that was single at the time. Okay, because I'm trying to yeah. think when the double pedal was invented mm -hmm. and when it came out and was popularized. But uh, okay, yeah, cool. He's going to get into the double bass. That, it, that that's of coming. But the first one, you know, <laughs> when you're kind of starting out, you know, it's it's hard to attain something like that. You know, yeah. a, a kit that size. It yeah, took, yeah. So. And he got good. He got good fast, yeah. apparently. And it looks like there's tape on the bottom of the heads for some dampening. Right. So the bottom of the heads appear to me to be Remo's. They, they appear, appear to be Remo Ambassador Clears. From some pictures, we can tell the top heads are the uh, the controlled sound, the clear with the black dot. I can see that, so I'm confident with that. The batter side of the bass drum appears to be a Remo pinstripe. And the Rezo side appears to be just like your stock Camco head, whatever came at the time. Looks like maybe a 15 inch hole, 16 inch hole, you know, microphone port cut out in it. So that's what we got there. Um, Love it. The sticks, I, I really can't tell what he's doing with the sticks. You know, yeah. um, I'm going to bring a stick into the into the picture here. Uh, he always used, you know, maybe from Ride the Lightning on, he always used a stick like this. This, he wrapped it in this green wrap here. This is tennis wrap this is tennis racket wrap and they make them, they make them in a number of colors it's got you know like your your generic athletic tape the white here tennis racket stuff so uh, i think that right from the beginning since he was a tennis guy this is probably how he had his sticks you know 5b wrapped is called torna wrapped in that green torna tennis racket tape for grip so yeah th that's that's, that's pretty what cool I, that's what i believe i don't know when that started but you know I'm pretty confident to say early because it's a tennis thing. So Yeah, and it makes sense. And I've played those like Zildjian sticks that had the dipped back where it was like a grippy thing, but it always ripped off when I would play yeah. for whatever amount of time. But I bet that tennis stuff was on there for good. I mean, that's that's uh, that's pretty that's cool. Some, no, some sticky stuff. And yeah, it sticks to itself. If you don't get it on there right, uh, forget about it. You got to cut it off and try again. Yeah, so I, I yeah. really believe early on this is probably what he was using for his sticks, and he yeah. would he would use this pretty much up until ninety five. Uh, he would, oh, wow. you know, yeah, he would use this type of stick till ninety five. That's um, wild. And we'll, we'll yeah. get into that story down the road. Is he using? I'm looking at a black and white photo where it looks like it says it looks like you can see his stick and he's holding it up. It almost looks like there's a roto tom or something up in the, the corner. I should mention that uh, for most of the Kill 'Em All tour and Kill 'Em All recording, he used roto toms. That that was cool. Yeah, always did. Uh, probably a six, eight, and a ten. That that's your you know your common roto to, uh, roto tom sizes. But that that was there for a while. That was there at least till that kit got stolen in January of '84. <laughs> so yeah, we had we had three roto toms. Man, I like roto toms. Yeah. I think everyone likes. Roto They're a little bit of the like kind of. I don't know. I don't think they get the respect that they right. deserve, but they are awesome. I like Rototoms. Uh, Rototoms are not like, you know, sexy for heavy metal. So I could see probably why he <laughs> dropped them at that time. You know, yeah. it, it wasn't, yeah. you know, it wasn't the thing. You know, back then it was Power Toms, uh, nine piece kits. So they're yeah. great, but that's probably why I dropped them. Yeah, I could yeah, be yeah, wrong, sure. but that's what I would say. So. Again, to kind of put this in perspective of where we're at, this is his first real kit. I think first most people kit. don't 
don't qualify like their their technical first kit. You kind of skip. This is first real kit. For, yeah, that's a hell of a real kit, and he's getting set up and getting you know figured out. His symbols are up pretty high. Yes. That middle one is Th- is pretty high up there. And that's another thing. That symbol's in the middle. <laughs> he, yeah, he kind of he shied away from that. Uh, now they're off to the right and left, but at that time it was right in the middle, and the other one wasn't too far off. So yeah. a different time, different time, and uh, yeah, because the way your your feet are angled and this giant thing right where it's angled, it l- tends to fall over. I would imagine. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, and the hardware, you know, wasn't the, the what should I say? It wasn't the heaviest back then. You know, when Tama got going in the '80s, and I, I have some of it here. That hardware is just stronger than I, anything I've ever seen then and now. <laughs> yeah, so that's, really nice stuff. That stuff's not falling over. But the, the, the Yamaha 8000, nothing against, you know, Yamaha. You know, I've never played it or anything, but it doesn't, you know, to me, in that position, look like the heaviest duty stuff that would not fall over on you. No. So, and it's no, high, but, like you said. So you yeah. have that weight, that that point yeah. of, you yeah, know, that tipping point and... Sure. And this is right in that point in time where the Ludwigs, the Slingerlands, the Rogers are starting to kind of like, oh, wait, the Japanese brands are starting to come in, Mm -hmm. which we'll see soon with like, you know, some of his his future drums. But um, all right. So that's Kill 'em All, uh, 81, 82. Where do we go from there? Uh, Well, now uh, 83. 83, they make that move to San Francisco, you know, uh, to meet up with Cliff. Yep. Cliff had those certain uh, requests that he wasn't going to join the band unless they moved to San Francisco, and they were they were fine with that. They didn't like it in L.A. The scene gotcha. wa- the scene wasn't as uh, you know powerful in L.A., so they went up there. So I think I think there was like a two or three month break. We bring in another kick drum. It's the same Camco kit, the same Camco Renaissance, probably seventy nine. He brings in another kick drum that is discussed in the uh, I believe yeah you know, the eighty seven Modern Drummer. There was an interview in there, and he said, you know, delivering papers, whatever he was doing, he managed to buy himself a second kick drum. So now he's got the two kick drums. Nice. He painted everything black, which <laughs> that's a... <laughs> I was going to say, I'm looking at pictures, I'm like, it's not the same kit, but man, I feel like a lot of Camco guys are going like, he uh, painted the he, kit. <laughs> I was I was just going to say that. He took that natural maple, <laughs> and he painted it. I don't know if he sprayed it. I, I don't know what he... House paint. Wow. He, o- only he knows that, but he painted that Camco maple, Jeez. that that natural maple with the lacquer on it. He painted it. It's his kit. It's his kit. But you know what? Oh, it looks it looks great with the black. So yeah, it's cool. Yeah. So he puts the second kick drum on. The kick drums look to be to me about a twenty two by fourteen at this point. the The front heads you could see are a custom head. It's got the Metallica logo on it. So they're probably just, probably a Remo Ambassador Ebony. Something, you know, you could put the logo right on. So we still got the same amount of toms. They're black. We have the one floor tom. We're still using the Yamaha hardware from the pictures. Um, I still at this point can't make out the symbols. This kit most likely is what Kill 'em All was recorded on. I'm pretty sure. Uh, they had cool. they had this he had this kit up until January of eighty four and then everything was stolen. Um <laughs> crazy we're still using the um the remo clear ambassadors on the bottom we could see tape for muffling we're still using the clear dots on the batters um and like i said you, i can't really make out the symbols i'm gonna assume the sticks are the same so really the only difference is that he added the second kick drum at this time which opens a lot of doors and that's metal and, yeah. and all that stuff and, right, and right. i just want to say again for people listening and not watching the tape pattern Seems like it's it's uh, he's doing it the same on pretty much every drum where it seems kind of purposeful where it's like it's almost like a sideways T where he's got a almost let's say in the middle he's got a line of tape but then about like you know twenty percent in you know or what three inches in on each drum that's where the the second piece of tape is right so he kind of seems like he has that instead of it just being random. Exactly. There's a pattern. He, yeah. he knows something. He's been doing it. I, I don't know if moon gels were out back then. I mean, moon gels are an awesome thing. Yeah. Um, so I don't know what they had back then, but that was probably some kind of muffling system. You, you know, you have some of the red and some of the black tape on those bottom heads. Yeah. And Very uh, cool. Yeah. So um, this kit, you could see this on Cliff Amal. 
you could see this. I think it was at the Stone, Chicago, mm. 83, September 83, August 83. Let me, uh, yeah, it's August 83. You could see this at the Stone in Chicago if you were interested in seeing it. That's that's yeah. that's the most popular video. The uh, the variation before that, uh, there's really no known videos of that one. So now they're okay. picking it. They're getting, they're getting more popular. They're picking up steam. So now we're getting more pictures. We're getting more videos. So you, you yeah. could see that one on Cliff Mall while he still had that. So... Interesting. Do we know what it, it looks like in the side view picture with the Marshall lamps and James is playing the flying V kind of looks like he has a Slingerland snare. Do we know what kind of snare he's using there? Or Well, from the first variation, I can see that is actually a Camco Renaissance. I see that inlay. Oh, that snare. I, oh, I wow. do. So I don't know if he changed it. He could have. Okay. But I know the first variation, he definitely had the matching snare on that kit. Okay, interesting. I mean, but then um, if I look at another picture, you can see a snare behind them kind of on the back of the stage mm -hmm. where you're like, so there's more, there's a couple snares going around yeah. here. I mean, this is... <laughs> there's, he has so many variations of so many things, so many okay. drums, you know, that's, it, it's, it's hard to tell you 100% this yep. early on. Um, yep. And if somebody knows exactly what that snare is, you know, you know, let me know. Bring it to light. We could all learn from that. It's something that I don't know. You sure. know, just, you know, correct me or something. I I don't know everything 100%, but yep. especially we're in the early the, years. <laughs> we're getting the conversation started <laughs> yeah, for people yeah. to kind of bring info to it and everything. And uh, uh, do we know pedals or anything that he's using there? Or we, can we assume it would be the, you know, uh, same ones as before? I'm going to say they're still, still going with the Yamaha. Yeah. Uh, over the years, there's been information and you know, maybe it's not 100%. I, I believe it to be factual. I could see those symbol stands in the picture. Comparing them with Yamaha 8000, that looks to me like Yamaha 8000 hardware. Uh, I always heard the pedals were also Yamaha. So, you okay. know, that that's what I'm going to assume he's got back there. There is no really clear shots or clear yeah. information of what 100% he's used back there you know sure so sure. i'm gonna assume yamaha at this point yeah yeah and I'm, I'm looking at the similar the same picture with the flying v and the side view really cool black and white and his hi-hat because you know, we all know when you have a double bass kit you're already spread wide and your hi-hats even further yeah, over it looks like his hi-hat it is way, way out, out there, there. And, he, and again he's not a giant guy no. with huge long legs so it's, very it's almost <laughs> like that thing's staying open. <laughs> Dif difficult to play, for sure. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. And he had that for quite a while. That goes all the way up to the mid-90s. He played like wow. that. So, if you can imagine that. Yeah. I guess you so, get used to it. Kind of looks yeah. like you've been riding a horse for a while. <laughs> <laughs> Your leg. Yeah. That, that stayed like that for a while. Okay. This is cool. All right, Chris. Anything else from this, uh, the Kill em All kit that we want to touch on? Well, there's the, now, now we're up to that point. This is a really... This is really important to the story. This kit is stolen. This kit is stolen along with uh, some of the band's other gear. I mean, I, I from the stories, they brought the bass and the guitars inside, but they were up in Boston, and whatever trailer or wherever they were storing, it was broken into, and the drums were stolen. Oh, my gosh. So, wow. <laughs> somebody, that sucks. Somebody out there has got those drums today. Imagine that. Could you imagine that? Man. And you know what well, you have? <laughs> I mean, and it's pretty, I don't know how many, it, it's pretty identifiable as a clearly a painted black Camco kit. Yeah. Like that's pretty, like there's, there's, you know, pretty quick to tell yeah. what that is. There's probably only one out there and that's his. Yeah. And that yeah. kit will probably never surface. Uh, no. You know? And it has Metallica <laughs> heads on it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you imagine man. having that. Yeah. So. But that's like when you steal like. You know the Mona Lisa or whatever, and then like, there was some story of some janitor who stole it and hid it under his bed back in you know the early whatever day, hundred years ago. Yeah, like you can't show it to anyone. You can't. It's like, you're not going to play this kid out. What's right. the? It's in your music room. I mean, well, back then, so they weren't popular back then. So it's some that guy could have even whoever took it could have even sold. Just like you know, we don't know who these guys are yet. So. It, maybe it's destroyed. Yeah. Maybe it was. Who knows? But if you, yeah. if somebody does have it, like you were saying, like having the Mona Lisa, you, you can't tell anybody. No, it's just they're watching they, this right now, laughing to themselves yeah. maniacally. It, exactly. <laughs> it's a sad. Right, well. It's it's a sad thing, but it, it happened. So that happened in January '84. So he had to get a new kit. So he had to get a new kit. So okay. uh, there was. In the same uh, Guitar Center YouTube, you, you could. It was about ten years ago. If you're interested in pulling that interview up, you can. It's uh, it's an interview with Lars from Guitar Center on YouTube. 
he discusses having to borrow all kinds of kits. They go to Europe. Yeah. He'd borrow these kits. They'd fall over. There was some even uh, uh, there was some information that he was borrowing uh, Charlie Benante's kit from Anthrax. That oh, was cool. a Slingerland kit. There is a picture of that kit. Um, I don't have any specific information on that kit, but there is a picture of that kit. There's also a really quick video on YouTube, uh, Paris 84. He's up there. He's got a Slingerland kit. It's got two rack toms, one floor tom, two bass drums. Gotcha. That's uh, said to be Charlie Benante's kit. So the, the, the gear gets stolen January of 84. They borrow you know, uh, what I just discussed, they borrowed from Charlie Bonante and everything. So yep. Music for Nations, that's their European distribution label. Uh, Music for Nations helps Lars. He gets a Ludwig kit. He gets a restored Ludwig kit. They help him out with that. I, I, I don't know the any more details of how they helped him out with that. but sure. So they get him this Ludwig kit. To me, it looks like an SL model, a Ludwig SL, or sometimes referred to as Ludwig Rockers. Uh, I'm not a real big Ludwig guy, so, you know, just doing some of that research, that's what I found. It looks like it. When I look at the picture, I see the badge is kind of like silver and black. And when you match that up, it looks like an SL kit to me. So he gets this SL kit. It it looks to be a seven-piece kit. You know, I get two kick drums, three rack toms, two floor toms, and a snare. Yep. It's all in black. Uh, This was used on the Ride the Lightning tour. It, this kit can be seen on the back of the Ride the Lightning album. In, in the, oh, cool. the, the album picture, Lars is actually playing this Ludwig. Uh, looks like, you know, you got your 12, 13, 14, probably 16, 18 on it. Uh, probably 14, six and a half snare. Zildjian symbols are now seen on this kit. I can see him in picture. So Zildjian is in the picture. I don't know if he's endorsed yet. I, I don't know about that, but they are in the picture at this point. Um, I'm, assu- yeah. I'm assuming it's Ludwig hardware. Um, we can see the heads. You know, we could um, we can see the Remo ambassadors. Yep. We're probably looking at the Ebony ambassadors in the front. It, you know, it's still got the Metallica logo on there. Yep. And the uh, the controlled sound black dot heads. Um, same on the snare, probably a clear black dot. So he uses yep. this for a while and... This is uh, this is the kit right before Tama endorses him. Back to my point when I was talking about Tama, this and his first kit are really the only time Lars has ever strayed from Tama. He, you know, he had yeah. the, he had the Camco, which was pretty much owned by Tama at the time. Yeah, it, that's interesting. Uh, <laughs> well, that's interesting, right? I didn't think about that. About, I mean, that's in really in the family because again, it's not like he played. Camco when it was like, you know, like Creedence Clearwater Revival where it was Doug Clifford playing where it's like an endorser Ex- of Camco. It was like later, but I don't know what year his Camcos were. I guess they were probably uh, a 79. I'm thinking yeah, 70, yeah, okay, 79. Okay. Late, late model. He described in the interview as a, as a last of the model Camco. Got it. So I'm going to assume 79. Okay. So. Interesting. But yeah, that that's a weird connection there. So really this Ludwig is the only kind of kind strange of from that. Yeah. And yeah. and if it wasn't stolen, it would have been Tama his whole pretty much professional career. So that that was an interesting thing with Lars. What's interesting too is is those are not the most expensive drums in the world. Like I had a Rocker Two, which was like the later version that had kind of the sprayed. I forget the the name of what they used. It was like an interior coating that was like gray. Yeah, the Zola which, coat, probably a Zola yeah, yeah, coat. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that was I think these earlier ones didn't have it. But I I bought a. Um, a uh, SL kit once to flip. I kind of did that a little in college where you'd buy a cheap kit, sell it to a student or something. And they were nice drums. I mean, yeah. really, they're not they're not the most expensive kit in the world. But uh, for what you got, they were they were great drums. And it's, you know, pretty cool. Lars was playing them. Yeah, he was, he was playing them for a little bit. So um, I guess now we move on to Ride the Lightning. Um, yes, yes. Now we're really getting we're really getting they're getting into their they're getting more popular. Yeah, they're getting more known. There's more videos, more pictures, meat and potatoes. We're, we're getting right in the middle. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So now we get with Tama. We get with, like I said, uh, Q Prime hooked him up with Neil Peart. Talked to him about Tama. Tama stepped in, helped out, and then they send him this Tama Imperial Star. Mm-hmm. Now the Imperial Stars, I think they were mahogany, but they were Zola coated, and they had the re rings in them. So he gets this nine piece Imperial Star. Um, it's 
chrome covered. It's chrome wrapped. Yeah. And I apologize if I'm wrong. I think it's a six ply mahogany Zola okay. coated with three rings. They sent it to him. It's mirror chrome. Now, mirror chrome is custom. I have never seen any mirror chrome Imperial stars, you know, pop up. Not an orphan sure. drum, sure. not a full kit, anything. So I believe that was a custom wrap for him at the mm. time. Um, Can you describe the coating that you you mentioned? Because I know Neil had the Vibra, or the, the, the name is escaping me now, on the inside, where it would be fiberglass kind of sprayed mm -hmm. on the inside of it. What is the coating you just mentioned? It's called Zola Coat. What it, is that? It, it's it's like a paint, um, and it hardens up, and it and as it was described to me, adds strength, oh, okay. uh, strength to the shell. It, it affects the sound a little bit. They were they were doing that on that Imperial Star line, I believe. It was back then only the Imperial Stars that they were doing it on. Uh, it. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe it was only the Imperial Stars. Haven't cool. haven't really seen it since. So they sent him this kit. It's mirror chrome. It's a nine piece. Um, we're using a. King beat snare. We're using a Tama King beat snare, chrome. Uh, the sizes are 12 by 11, 13 by 12, 14 by 13, 15 by 14, 18 by 16, and a 20 by 18. This has always been an area for debate. For years, I've heard this. I, it, I'm pretty much 99% sure from the pictures we can see it is an 18 and a 20 inch floor tom. Wow. For ride the lightning, and put the deed to my house on it. That's what's there. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it is. So I'm confident in that. So yeah, yeah. It was That's a, a big, yeah. big floor tom. It is. You know, people would say, "Well, it's two eighteens. It's it's a sixteen in it. It will become two eighteens." Sure. But believe me when I tell you, at this period, 1984, that Ride the Lightning tour kit, Imperial Star, it's an eighteen by sixteen and a twenty by eighteen floor tom. Gotcha. That's what we got. So okay, and this is kind of a weird note, but I'm only mentioning this because I did that uh, an episode on the history of like dr bass drum art. It looks more like a graphic now, where in the past I'm sure it was probably someone who like painted on Metallica, right. but now we get kind of the metal like gradient with the sharpness. Mm -hmm. Like the quality is just getting better. Clearly they're getting bigger, but yeah. that just kind of goes along with that bass drum art history where. That technology evolved more at that time as right. well. Right. Now, the logo, I actually, um, I had to get the logo done on a replica kit I built. So let's talk about that logo for a minute. There's there's some Ride the Lightning blue in that logo. It's through the middle, and it's mm -hmm. down where the A and the M kind of point. There's some blue. So somebody had to you know design that. That's not something you're going to go to the hardware store and get some letters and stick on. So you're absolutely yeah. right. That was a graphic that was made. So they're getting bigger. That's what we got for front heads. And it looks, again, that looks like Ebony Ambassadors to me. Are we still, I would imagine that he has fully switched everything over. Uh, we know we know Zildjian's. Let's just talk symbols and um, hardware a little bit more. Because now we can clearly see the Zildjian logos on everything. But that doesn't mean he wasn't playing Zildjian before, because for a long time there was not the printed Zildjian logos mm -hmm. on everything. Correct. Uh, I refer everyone to the Zildjian symbol collecting episode with uh, Vincent Ward about that one. But um, so, do we know like what his symbol setup and like you know the sizes of of, of that were for this uh, Ride the Lightning? You know, early Tama kit. Right. So Ride the Lightning. Uh, I don't know if he's endorsed, but he's definitely using Zildjian. Uh, we're yeah. using Zildjian Platinums. That's that's okay. that that's been out there. It's a Zildjian Platinum. So um, it looks to me like he's using uh, on the on well, on his right. So it's probably a 19, 18, 17, and sixteen crash. And they go down in that order. He's got uh, the four crashes on the one side. Uh, he's using a twenty-inch Zildjian Rock Ride. He has a Z series dyno, the Z series dyno beats. He's always used them. Really? He, he used them when they were the Z series. He uses them now as the A series. The Zildjian dropped the Z custom line. I believe they dropped that in uh, 2009. So, yeah, I always liked it. It was really thick and it was really heavy. And I, I it was, I mean, I, I imagine he probably broke a fair amount because oh, yeah. of that, like, thickness. But the dyno ones, they have the big, like, the giant hammer marks. Yes. Right? They, yeah, they do. Um, and he's always used those. Like I yeah. said, they were C's and now they're A's. So he's using the dinos. Everything else is a medium thin. If you could believe that, he was always using medium thin crashes. 
<laughs> well, uh, it explodes. Yeah, I mean, they're thin too. So, but yeah, yeah he's always yeah, yeah, he's yeah. always used a medium, medium thin crash. Okay. So what did I, I gave you? So I gave you the 18, 17, uh, 16, the four crashes. I'm sorry, 19, 18, 17, 16, the four crashes, yep. the ride. He has a Chinese 20 inch China, uh, China low on the on the right side, China high on the left. On the left, he's also got two crashes. We probably got an 18 and 17. Uh, it was discussed in a later interview that sometimes if things were broken, uh, I believe it was Modern Drummer 87, if cymbals were broken on tour, sometimes he'd carry a 16. You know, sizes would okay. change depending on, you know, I guess what he had on him and what was going on at the time. So they did change. Sure. But they were Zildjian Platinums. Uh, crashes were medium thin. You had your China high, low, 20 inch, right and left, and the Z series hi hats at the time. All the stands at this time were Tama Titan, red labels, model 6904, real heavy duty weighted cymbal stands. Uh, the, t- the top of the line that Tama offered back then, even when you look at them today, just really beefy stands. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, super cool. And, um, this is just a little side note, but it looks like he likes to have his set list taped to his left. I've noticed that on his previous kits, too. On, on one of his Rototom stands, it looked like he had it taped there. And in one of the Imperial Star uh, kits, it looks like he just he likes to tape it over to his left, which, you know. Yeah, that's always cool. that's always been a thing. It's been a piece of paper with the set list. Uh, he still does it to this day, but now it's like an iPad and it's all yeah. it's all digital. So, yeah, that, yeah, that's always been a thing. Always been there on the left. Are the so. bottom heads, am I mistaken, or are they like open, like semi bottom head with like uh with like like a porthole on the bottom head right. basically? So they've always uh well not always, but um back then Ride the Lightning Master Puppets, they always appear to be they're open concert they're they're not concert toms. They're uh, double sided toms, but he had the bottom heads cut. They were always cut. I assume, and this is just me assuming, that they were cut and so he could keep the bottom you know, the bottom hoop for looks. Oh, sure. I, you know, me personally, I, I don't like the look of concert toms. Maybe that's what he was thinking back then because... It's a thing. I don't... Uh, you know, everyone has different taste, but it's definitely like a generational thing. Right. It's a little bit more 70s to be having concert toms and a little less heavy metal. Right, right. So they were, they were cut, uh, I assume, like everything else. They were Remo ambassadors clear ambassadors that's what he was always using they're cut yep. um probably on the floor toms as well um the heads mm. the heads you know, they varied around this this time the mid 80s um on this kit this chrome imperial star they're all pinstripes including the floor toms they you know they did change at a later time but we're using the pinstripes at this time 12 13 14 15, 16, 18 are pinstripes. The bass drum batter heads are also pinstripes. Sometimes we could see some tape where the beaters strike. Sometimes it's not there, but that's that's what we're using for heads. Uh, the snare at this time is clear, uh, controlled sound, you know, with the, with the reverse black dot. And yep. it looks like underneath he's using the ambassador, you know, the snare head, the thin snare head, uh, a clear one. So yeah. th- that's what we're looking at with heads. Sure. So. Now, while we're on heads, I mean, and and I really don't know the answer to this. It, it, is Lars considered like a really heavy hitter? Is he a you know soft hitter? Does he? And then on that note, does he like to change his heads every single night? Does he let him ride for a while? You know, ride the lightning pun. <laughs> uh, do, or what's what's that? You know, starting with is he a heavy hitter? So from the interviews I read, yeah, he was he was a very heavy hitter. Uh, he's a very small guy, but he. It was known and it was said that he was a heavy hitter. He would always, uh, you know, break sticks. And okay. I, I do remember hearing that the heads weren't changed every show, but quite frequently. Um, okay. You know, it, it would depend on the condition of that particular show, you know, what the tech was going to do at the time. I think it was uh, Fleming uh, Larson back then was the tech. Uh, okay, if cool. he, If he changed them every show or not. So... Interesting. Yeah. Why not? I mean, you're. I mean, at this point, it's fair to say in in the world of metal. I mean, he is one of the biggest drummers in the world. Yeah. Uh, so they want to sound good and and not have any issues. I guess it's more of a safety precaution too, of not breaking a head on stage. Right. And again, you know, 
I know Remo endorses him, but that's something that I can never really find out. It's not really out there. When did Remo start endorsing him? You know, that same with Zildjian. When did they start? So I, I don't know if he's endorsed by Remo at this point. I'm assuming, but yeah. I don't know for a fact. And th- and that would also, you know, play a big role too. If they're just sending you a bunch of heads, <laughs> change him. You know. Yeah. You know, I was watching a video of someone. Uh, I forget. I should know his name, but there's a YouTube video of uh, you know the the drummer Luke Holland, who's an incredible mm-hmm. metal drummer of his tech, who was like setting up his kit. Yeah, I saw and that was video. Like, yeah, and it was I like was a bin. That, yeah. Yeah, I was watching yeah. it too. It was a bin of like clear heads and he was like checking if it was level, but it's very different for me to go to Guitar Center and spend, like to change all the heads oh. on, on a Lars kit would be, th- oh, top and bottom would be like $400. Yeah, four or 500 so bucks, yeah. I will change them <laughs> uh, like every th- four years. Right, or exactly. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've got bottom heads that I haven't changed in 20 years. <laughs> yes, I have so. front bass drum heads that are 20 years yeah. old. But I, um, I am nobody, so that that doesn't matter. But but you know, uh, I'm, me too. I, I imagine if if he's endorsed by Remo at this time, quite frequently. But yeah. he, he was a very hard hitter, and it was always said that he spit a lot. Believe it or not, and he would always rust up the hardware. Wow, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, that was that was in the interview too. He was he was a, you could still see today. They're all they they spit everywhere. So yeah, well, there's like the drink water, and, and then they spit, spit it out. For effect, yeah, but. Whoa, so yeah. it's rusting the hardware. It was, the, it, the interview said, yeah, it's starting to rust the chrome on the hardware. Uh, yeah, oh, I imagine, so. It makes, but, I mean, that's that's science. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you used to get water all over your <laughs> right. drums. So yeah, he was he was a heavy hitter back then. Okay, so. all right. Well, that's good to know. So, all right, Imperial Stars, he's, he's with Tama. He's he, loving it. Zildjian, it's all cool. Where do we go from there? Okay, so uh, this Imperial Star... You can see this, one of the most popular gigs they did is uh, the Day on the Green in 85. Day on the Green 85 is, you see it kind of from one angle, but that that's the Imperial Stars we're speaking of. Um, so if you're interested in seeing those, sure. Day, Day on the Green is where to see them. So after Day on the Green, that's, what is that? That's end of August, 84. Yeah, so now they go into Master of Puppets. They go to record that. So... Um, we really don't see the Imperial Star so much. They they head over to do the recording. Now we get the superstars. They come into the picture. So yeah. it was said that Thomas sent out two kits. We have a, a European superstar and we have an American. Uh, the American kit really didn't come into the picture till they started touring on Master of Puppets. In, I think it was March 86. So we're, we'll discuss the European variation. The layout is the same. The symbols are the same. Um, we bring in, uh, it's called Cherry Wine. Cherry Wine Red Thomas Superstars. Uh, Nine-piece birch. You've got your 12, 13, 14, 15, 18, 20. That hasn't changed. Okay. Um, kick drums. I'm sorry, I didn't mention that prior. All The, the Imperial Star, all the way up till through the 90s, we're using a 24 by 16. That was the Imperial Star. That's, that's going to be the Superstar. Sorry about that. It's a 24. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So those are the same. These red cherry wines were used probably because of shipping. They were used mainly in Europe. Now, after the day on the green, we see uh, Hammerfest in Germany. Uh, I think that was in September 85. We see these We see these drums, these cherry wine. They show up. He's using them in the video. Um, there, there's a lot of pictures of these. Yeah, so, beautiful. Yeah. Uh, the, these are used... I believe, I want to say these were uh, used to record Master of Puppets. It's pictures of them in the studio, the Master of Puppets session. Um, the symbol arrangement's different, but we're using the same hardware. Tama Titan, you know, you got your 6904 boom stands. Your hi-hat, yeah, I'd like to give you some some model numbers here. So we're using the Tama Titan hi-hat 6985 it's a hi-hat stand. Uh, we're using a right side, they call it an X-hat arm. Uh, it's just like an auxiliary thing. Uh, I believe that's an 895, Tama X 895. Snare stand is your 6890T. So the hardware really hasn't changed much from the uh, the Ride the Lightning Imperial Star kit. So they're still yep. using the same hardware. The symbols are still the Platinums. We're still using Zildjian Platinums. The heads are still, he's still using pinstripes for the batter. Uh, he's still cutting the bottom. Uh, sure. Probably uh, Remo Ambassadors. Uh, the sticks, like I said, now we can see the sticks. So I'm going to bring this back. Uh, they are Regal, Regal Tip. He had his own model at that time, the Lars Ulrich model. This is mm. this is pretty much 
this same model, just not his. It's not, you know, stamped Metallica, but this is a Regal Tip 5B. Yeah. With the tennis wrap that I described earlier. So now we can see that he's using those exclusively. Which Regal Tip, uh, I don't actually know if they're still in business. No, they are, I talked they are with not. them like three years ago to an episode, and I think that was right as things were yeah. kind of going down, which is a shame because I, I would love to do a history on them, and I, yeah. probably, I hope to someday. But uh, it's interesting. That's one thing. Camco and Regal Tip. I was sort of like, oh, I didn't really realize Lars was using that those brands because you don't think of like metal drummers so he's you know it's interesting so yeah so regal tip is not around anymore um trying to get a set of five b's is impossible you have to just you know you have to search ebay and just whatever you could find used yeah that's what it is so regal tip's not around anymore but that that's what he was using for sticks they're still wrapped and uh i believe that's that tennis wrap you know there's another way to do it i think i read in an interview there was something called uh stick handler there's a company that oh, okay. also makes this green kind of wrap. It's the same consistency. You could you could confuse the two. But now that he's getting more popular, is he using the stick handler stuff or are we still using the the green tennis wrap? So that that yeah that yeah, I, that I don't know. Yeah, is the stick handler for drumsticks or is it for <laughs> like sporting equipment? No, the stick handler is made for the drumsticks. Okay, the, well, it's interesting. It's the same color. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's that's why I say there's two ways to do it. So yeah, I don't yeah. know when he switched over, but there was gotcha. I I did read an interview that he did use the stick handler grip tape when he was okay. still using the Regal tip. So when he switched over, I, you know, I, that I really don't know. Sure. So I will note too that as I'm looking through this, it looks like his. This is this is again we're we're like deep into nerdery here, but I will say <laughs> it looks like his uh, his tape situation changed as far as dampening looks like he's got like a little strip on the top but you notice in some pictures that he does have that kind of like kind of flagged uh duct tape tape yeah whatever duct it tape is. where it's like small and then you put like a little flag and some of them are actually kind of intricate yeah wavy patterns it looks like gaff tape or something yeah, like that yeah. kind of thing yeah um all right that's pretty cool so that's europe beautiful drums i got a note as well though because i did a whole power tom episode we're talking power tom. Oh, absolutely. I mean, he's, yeah. he's he's a power tom. He's he's a poster boy of power toms. I mean, uh that last that last uh rack tom on the top is a 15 <laughs> by 14. That's huge. Can you yeah. can you imagine trying to be the tom holder to hold that up? No, that it's is stressing a, the whole time. And it, and it's a 6 ply birch. It is from from actually holding it, I can tell you, very very heavy drum. So Yeah. <laughs> and the logistics, this was brought up in the the Power Tom episode with Kyle Schneider that we talked about how like the logistics of that drum is giant on top of a 24 inch bass drum. Everything is so much higher. Yeah. Yeah, and these Ugh. mounts and the, the the tom mounts weren't the best. Where that you have to like, I don't know. You don't have as much logistics, which means then your throne has to come up. And again, Lars is not. He's not a big guy. Not a tall guy. Again, so he <laughs> and you don't want the the floor the, your your giant floor tom rubbing on your bass drum the whole time. It's a logistical kind of nightmare. As there are some pictures out there where you see the rash on the right side kick drum from that big tom. Yeah, now, now we're wasn't. we're talking fifteen fourteen. I just want to say as the years go on, we get even bigger. <laughs> we got a, we got a sixteen by fifteen coming up. You know, we're talking fifteen by fourteen. That's sixteen by fifteen. Man, we'll just let that <laughs> till we get yes. there. That's that's massive. But yeah, I should mention the tom holders are the uh, the Omni locks. They're they're really good. Uh, okay. They're really good tom holders. Um, you know, I have a fifteen by fourteen on that same setup, and I don't have any problem with it. But yes, you're right. It brings everything up. Yeah. Um, you got to angle it weird. You can't play with it as straight. You know, so now you have to, and that's why his. Everybody said, well, why are his toms always angled like that? He really had no choice. <laughs> he couldn't. Yeah, you couldn't. There's no other way. There's no way to put them straight up. Like now you see uh, tr metal drummers, death metal drummers particularly, they have them, you know, straight lined up, straight. No, no yeah. angle. He couldn't. He couldn't back no. then. Uh, that's just the way it was. Power toms were the thing. And unfortunately, the bigger they are, you have to you have to angle them. So that's, that's what yeah. was going on with there. At least I believe anyway. So. Yeah. If you're going to be awesome and use giant power toms there's some sacrifices <laughs> there are to some make. sacrifices <laughs> <laughs> definitely so that's europe right that's, so that's so europe two um, two kits made two kits from made Tama. 
Yep. Four of the Master of Puppets, one used in the studio, uh, one used for the American leg of the tour. Um, as we get deeper into 87, though, you know, I kind of see the uh, the cherry wine superstar fade out. I, I don't see it as much. So, you know, maybe back then it was easier on shipping costs or whatever it was. But it kind of it kind of faded out by um, okay. March of eight, March of 86. It fa- it's faded out. So now we're using um, the uh, it's Thomas. We're still Thomas Superstar. Now it's Amira Crow. Uh, like I said, with the Imperial Star, this wasn't this wasn't a Tama offered color option. They were wrapped. They were probably specifically done for him at the time. The sizes are pretty much the same. Now, here's where the floor toms change. I mentioned that earlier. That, that was always, there was a lot of debate with that. The floor toms have changed now, and they change. This change is going to stay pretty much to the mid-90s. Now we're using two 18 by 16 floor toms. Same tuning, same heads. We've got the Remo pinstripe on the top, and we've got the, uh, the clear ambassadors on the bottom. Now on that American kit, the floor toms always had the pinstripe, but the rack toms had the uh, controlled sound clear dot. I don't know why that was done, but that varies from the European kit. The European kit, you know, and, and the Imperial Star kit were all pinstripes. So now he's using controlled sa- controlled sound clear dots on the rack toms and the pinstripes uh, for the floor toms. And, mm. and the snare also changed. We're using a coded um, uh, controlled sound uh, reverse dot. Now it's a coded one instead of a clear. So that changed. Hardware is pretty much all the same. Sticks are all the same. The interesting thing with that chrome kit is it has cherry wine hoops. Which looks yeah. awesome. Right. Beautiful. Right. So we've got the cherry wine hoops. The heads are taken off the Imperial Star. They're put on that kit. We could tell that. Cherry wine hoops, they look great. You know, they, they match kind of the, the red and the Master Puppets theme. Kick drums, we're still using 24 by 16. But now we see a Tama logo gotcha. show up on this kit. So before it was just Metallica was the logo. You didn't see Tama anywhere. So now we're starting to see the Tama logo come into play on these uh, kick drums. Which is the best kind of promotion. And uh, it... You know, I, I, again, I'm connecting my two dots of doing my my Neil my Neil series with um, Paul Wells and and then doing this with you. Neil never had Tama on his bass drum heads ever, mm. so I wonder if they were like, please just put the you know, <laughs> logo on the head, right? Right. Give us, give us yeah. a break. And I mean, they're getting real popular now, and yeah. I mean that that's that's one of the best things Tama ever did was sign him. So. Uh, could you imagine if it was different? Could you imagine if he played Pearl <laughs> in an alter- no. in an alternate universe? Yeah, so it's weird to think it, about it, that. It, it they're, they're like meant to be, right? You you can't think of it any other any any differently. But like I said, that he's always been Tama. So yep. now the Tama is starting to show up in the kick drums, and it does from this point, you know, till today, it's on the kick yep. drum. So that's that's another change uh, that I should discuss there. We still got all the same hardware. Symbols are still the same. I don't see any changes or any variations in those. But uh, we are using a chrome wrapped. Uh, it's a six ply superstar at this point. Which again, like you said, was a custom job. Custom job. For uh, Lars. Still to this day, I've never seen a mirror chrome superstar kid. I've never seen an orphan drum, any ads, anything mentioned on it. Well, you've built, I mean, so this one, I guess, would kind of be, dare I say, impossible to build as like a tribute kit because they don't exist. They don't, There's ex- only, they don't exist. Yeah. You have to take a superstar and you have to wrap it. Rapid, because at yeah. the time that was only done for him in, unless somebody knows something else but i'm just telling you i've never seen it uh, in all my sure. years i've never seen a chrome superstar we've yep. we've seen cherry wine superstars that was a color they offered but never a chrome at least that i've seen yeah so and so so he's got that x hat totally jumping around here so he's got no. that x hat set up over on his right which again i think makes sense with the logistics of having this giant wide drum set does he typically keep that like clamped down or is that at a like medium open kind of t- or do we know you know that's hard to say i i don't know for sure i would imagine it being open a little bit just by you know yeah, the yeah, yeah. sound of metallica you know you never sure. you never really hear a tight you know no but tightly closed. it's probably got a little bit more to it because his his one over here could be totally loose and then right. he doesn't have to mess with his foot and this like 
completely spread apart yeah. legs. That's a ma- you know. Well, it's wh- cool. when you hear it, you usually hear it on the faster songs like Battery and uh, um, Damage Incorporated. So it, it's probably you know, right in the in the middle there, just a little yeah. with a little with a little gap in there. So yeah. Snares, anything different that we know about? Snare, we're, we're still using a, mas- uh, a steel, ma- um, a Crow Mastercraft, uh, 14 by six and a half common. We're still using that. Uh, no change there. Same thing on the European kit, the Imperial Star kit. Still using Got the it. same snare. Is Lars a gear guy? You know what I mean? Is he a big drum, like tech, you know, nerd kind of guy? Or uh, I don't. Did he leave it to someone else? <laughs> I think he would leave left it to somebody else because, like I was saying earlier, it's so hard to find stuff. You know, if he yeah. was, it, I believe, if he was a gear nerd, it would it would be out there a lot more. It's it's sure. so difficult to find. You know, one hundred percent what it was. There's always going to be stories and interviews here, but they really don't get too deep in it. They don't they don't you know deep dive in it per se as, as we're doing today. So yeah, uh, you know, I would say, I would say no. <laughs> uh, well, which which it's been said before, but like Ringo's not. Yeah. You don't need you don't need to be. No. I mean, but like it doesn't change it. But like if if guys or girls are, you're right where you typically do know because they're on the forums and they're on the threads yeah. and they, they have interviews going because they like to talk right. about it just like we're doing they're, right now. They're doing so. the clinics and they're doing the workshops. Yes. And, and but it was always said that, you know, he was he was always the guy that wanted to play with the band. He didn't like going home and practicing every single day and, and you know, yeah. doing all these lessons. So he has had lessons, uh, but, yep. you know, he's not really huge deep into it. So, I mean, everybody's different, but. Yeah, that's a good answer. But I, when you play all the time and you're in these bands, I've heard many people, I think George Harrison said once that, like, when they weren't playing with the Beatles, he, like, he said he didn't touch his guitar for a year mm. or something like that. Like, whatever. I right, mean, you're, right. It's, it's your job. So, all right, Chris, where do we go from well, there, man? This is so, going on. Awesome. All right, so let me let me rewind a little. I should bring up something. In the studio on Master of Puppets, there was a, a Ludwig Black Beauty. That's what he recorded with uh, Lightning and Master of Puppets. That was um, it was Rick Allen from uh, yeah Rick Allen from Def Leppard. Uh, he yep. would he would borrow that and he never brought it on the road, but it was always known that that's what he used in the studio to record with. So, you know, Tama might cool. not like this, but I'm going to tell you that Master of Puppets yeah, that was <laughs> that's a look that's, cool. that's a look big Black Beauty. Well, yeah. that's a that's like a Holy Grail kind of snare. Yeah. I mean, that's everyone you know. And once you're in the studio. I feel like all bets are off, which yeah. I, I will mention, you said to me before we started that we're primarily talking about, minus that bit of info, yeah. we're talking really mainly about the live kits. Yeah, we're talking about the uh, live kits. There's so much variation in the studio. I mean, Sabian, Gretsch, all kinds of stuff he's used. Um, there's different yeah. colors. I mean, you, you, watching, like, if you've seen some kind of monster, there's just, like, three or four different colored drum kits, all yeah. different brands. So for time's sake, uh, you know, we're, we're Maybe gonna, we do that another time <laughs> Maybe, down the for road. For now, let's talk about the tour kits because that in yes. itself is there's a lot. So yeah. All right. Well, where do we go from there? So where are we now? Eighty five master puppets. We're talking about the chrome kit. So we did the hardware, the heads, sticks. Everything's the same. So, uh, you know, we know, you know, we know Cliff passed. Yeah. After uh, yeah. after the Sweden show. So yeah. now there's now there's a pause. And we know Jason came on. So there's a little lull in the touring, but. As far as the gear is concerned, the next variation is, and it's in Japan, Japan 86. Now he's got a white art star, a white art star one. Probably it's always been said for shipping reasons, you know. You know, I I don't know what it costs or what it takes to ship a kit that size over there, but it's always been said for shipping. Overseas, there's been variations. So now Japan 86 we see a white art star. Um, it's got the full one piece lugs. And that's yeah. that's interesting because he's never really been a one piece lug kind of guy. You know, sure. we know that from the coming up, you know, black album kit we'll talk about later. He's always been a split single lug. So we see the one piece. We know it's a white art star. Uh, I believe it's piano white. I could be wrong. But this was offered by Tama. So you could get this color if you wanted to. So. Um, still the same tom mounts, still the same sizes, symbols are the same. Um, so it was really used for that one show. Uh, the heads are the clear dot uh, controlled sound. I could see those on there. The bottoms are still, we're still using Ambassador, Remo Ambassador clears. And it looks to be like they're the full, he's got the full head on, on the bottom now. 
So things are changing. Uh, same snare using the Chrome King beat, I believe. Um, and that was only for one show. There's no real other history on this kit. I don't see it popping up anywhere. Or, yeah. You know? well, let me just clarify a little bit. So you said this was like, I mean, I think Japan, I think Tama. So was this kit in Japan? Like, did he or was it wasn't shipped there or it was shipped there? I, I, I imagine I, they would probably be like, hey, we got a kit. For we, you. we got We're a in kit. Japan. We'll, we'll bring it here. Um, <laughs> yeah. But, you know, I have talked before with his current tech, Jimmy, and everything he has, he, he retains, you know. I mean, there, there's, oh. there, there's situations he, he gives it away. I mean, I think he gave a drum set to the drummer from Kid Rock. But everything's up there in headquarters. Got so it. I imagine he's still got that kit. Okay. Maybe it was returned to Tama. I can't really give you an answer. But okay. that, that makes sense. You're going to Japan. Tom is in Japan. We'll provide you this kit. So there's yeah. there's a quick video on it, real quick. They're doing a they're doing a sound check. You could see it's a real quick snippet. You could see that kit up there. So it's definitely it's a white art art star, same sizes. I believe uh, I want to say the art stars were still birch at this time. Uh, you know, I'm not sure on that. You know, I've I've okay. not really dug into art sure. stars too much, but. Or at least the uh, Art Star One, the Art Star Two. I have more knowledge on, but the Art yeah. Star Ones. You know, if it's not Maple, it's going to be your six, seven ply Birch at this okay. time. So that's Japan eighty six. Um, All right. Pedals. I, I haven't really mentioned pedals. You know, I didn't bring it up with the uh, the Chrome Imperial Stars, and um, so the pedals throughout this period are going to be your Tama King Beat sixty uh, sixty seven fifty five. He's using Tama King beats. These are the pedals uh, pretty much for this period. Uh, it stays this way. I mean, he does change in the justice years. But right now we're using King beats. So I should mention that. I didn't really just get into that too much with the uh, lightning and, and uh, the yeah. uh, cherry wine kit. But yeah, they're King beats. So have you played? I mean, I've never played those. Are they nice pedals? I and... believe I've never played King beats. Um, okay. I, I will tell you a little story. I With the three kits that I've done, I, I, I had the period correct hardware but when you come off of something like your new tama iron cobra iron cobra sorry <laughs> 900s with the cobra spring it is so yes. hard to oh, go back yeah. i'm not saying it's bad but it's just so difficult so well, i i had them they were used to it you're only yeah. you're only used to what you have but once right. you try like once you, something once you, iron, iron yeah, cobras are awesome your speed cobras it's so hard to go back so i really don't know too much about those king beats Honestly, I've yep. never had them. I have had other hardware, but never the King Beats. Yeah, so. the playability is a little different. Definitely, yeah. All right, so moving on from there, what, we're at about 87 now? We're, about, we're about 87. Uh, so the next thing chronologically is Garage Days. Garage Days okay. Revisited. Um, this was something to get, you know, kind of like tune Jason up. He was new in the band. They didn't go right into Injustice for All at this time. So they did Garage Days. So there were some ads that popped up in your modern drummer. Uh, he's seen with a white Grand Star. We can tell it's a custom. So Grand Star had these kind of like single lugs. This is a Grand Star lug. Um, and the more expensive, like your custom models, came with a rubber gasket. A little cheaper models, they didn't have the rubber gasket. So in this picture, I could see the rubber gasket. So I could tell you it's a, it's a Grand Star custom. Uh, it was white. It was said to be that that's what he was going to use going forward for justice. Uh, as we know, it, it didn't work out that way. He went with something different. It, it, it was cool. that kit, but it was painted differently. So Very cool. I like the layout. I mean, the, it's cool just to see these old ads, too. And, like, the you know, he's got a beer and he's hanging out over the front and stuff. <laughs> just kind of yeah. cool. So in that in that ad, it's um, I believe it lists some stuff underneath for, like, a rock star. So, like, you know, we're, like you're yeah, saying, we're, we're not expecting you to go for the grand star. But if you want to kind of mimic him with the rock star. So I think the sizes are listed too, but it, we're still the same sizes in that ad, you know, 12, 13, yep. 14, 15, two 18s, 14 inch snare. So they're kind of mimicking that ad. So that, that is a pretty cool ad. Uh, it is cool. Yeah. And he's split back, back to normal, you know, separate lugs, separate lugs. Where it looks like the rock star has the single right. connected lug, the but his does not. He, yeah. he was always partial to the single lug. Um, yeah, and lug. I am too. Yeah. I think, I mean, it's, I think it's just so a too. vibe. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It, it looked different on stage, but <laughs> Yeah, but they're, yeah, they're, they're, for sure. they're all, it's chrome at this point. I should mention that in that ad, these single split Grand Star lugs are chrome. Everything up to this point has been chrome uh, for the shell hardware. Now we're about to change with that. But 
it's chrome it. single at this point on the grand stars so yeah. we're getting to 88 87 they're recording injustice for all the chrome superstars are used for injustice for all the kick drums at least anyway for the pictures we have he always liked the sound of the kick drums it was said and he used them on the injustice for all recording I don't want to get too much in the studio, like I said before, but, sure. but it is important Slippery to know. Slope. Yeah. <laughs> For that album, you have the two chrome covered superstar kick drums and the rack toms and the snare. Uh, well, I don't particularly know what the snare is, but the rack toms you can definitely see our grand star. So, okay. so that's what we're using to record on uh, Justice for All. Now, and Justice for All comes out. And like I was saying earlier, everybody, it was he was supposed to be using that white kit or, or they were hinting that that was going to be the next kit. But He's, he's still using the Grand Star Customs, but now we have a custom paint job. Again, Tama didn't offer this. They offered something called Gunmetal Gray, which varied differently. I mean, you can see it behind me. This is a, yeah. this is a lighter kind of, uh, I've heard Gunsmoke Blue mentioned before. Yeah. It's custom. It's a custom paint job for him. Uh, a lot of things have been custom so far. And, yeah. and now, as you can see, we get into the black hardware. Yeah. The shell hardware is black. This wasn't done too much back then. I mean, I, I believe the drummer from Ozzy had some black hardware, but now we have a Grand Star Custom, and obviously we have customized black hardware. It was said they were powder coated, m most likely, so the sizes are still the same. You get your 12 by 13, 13, 14, 14 by 13, 14 by 15. We're still using the 218s. Again, like I said, that's always been up for debate. We're still using yeah. 218s. 224s we got this custom color we've got the new omni mount mth 50 tom mounts let me uh bring one into the picture sure we have so, this is the new this is what tama went with you know oh, we've cool. got the hex bottom here i don't know if you could see that yeah it's it's a quirky mount but it's very very adjustable so we that's that's something new now we see metallica's off the front of the heads we're just we're just oh, yeah, going with just tama. tama we're just tama now we are a Remo Ambassador. I mean, prior it was a, a Remo Ebony Pinstripe, but now we're Remo Ambassador. There's no Metallica logo. It's all Tama. But like, I mean, but earlier and a lot of times those the, the bass drum head is used because like, hey, here's, here's who we are. At that point, they know who you exactly. are. Exactly. We're bigger like, now, yeah. There's a banner. There's like a, you know, <laughs> gigantic stage set up. Yeah. So, yeah. They're going on their own stadium tour across the country. Yeah. They're known. <laughs> so we don't need the Metallica on there. So now it's all Tama. We're using an Artwood snare. Uh, for Injustice for All tour, you know, they started in the summer of 88. They started uh, Monsters of Rock stadium tour. He, he was using a chrome. I think it was a chrome king beat. You, people, uh, I'm sure comments correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe it was a chrome king beat. Uh, oh, they will. <laughs> <laughs> chrome king beat on the stadium tour. When they came into the, uh, you know, the coliseums and your convention centers, now he's using a an eight inch deep by 14 snare. Now, this kit is pretty synonymous with, I'm sure you've seen it, Seattle 89. Uh, that is a great show and we could see in that show at least you know at least i picked it up there are he's he's using two different snares we're using they're the same size the same model but there's a black one and there's a white one probably nobody's ever seen it unless you're really a, a you know a gear nerd like myself a metallica <laughs> drum nerd when they edit that video the same song we could see a black snare drum we could see a white snare drum. That's interesting. Yeah, they're not. What's the story with they're, that? They're not or? switching it that fast. <laughs> yeah, so just it's just filming two different nights. Two or different something. nights. It's edited, so that's yeah. how we know there's there's two snares on that. So on gotcha. on that particular uh, Coliseum tour, uh, both Birch uh, Artwoods. Um, I believe I have a model number for you. AW two one eight. Artwood okay. Artwood Birch. So he's Got using it. that. There's two of those. Um, all pinstripes. All pinstripes on the toms. Yep. All, Do we have bottom heads? We, or? On, on the Monsters of Rock stadium tour, we don't have bottom heads. That's, I'm glad you brought that up. I almost overlooked that. The, yeah. the inside of these shells on the stadium tour are painted black. The floor toms are natural. I, I could see why. You know, you've got this beautiful gray kit. You've got black hardware. Do you want a natural <laughs> shell just, showing? Yeah. yeah. Attention so, to detail. And I'm, I'm assuming because it's a stadium, there's a, it's a lot different sound. The stadium yeah. tour, there are no heads. We go back into the Coliseum. Now we have heads. We have uh, Remo Ebony Ambassadors on the bottom. 
everything's headed up again, but it's still, you know, you've got the black shells. It's the same shells from, you know, the stadium tour, but now we've got heads on it. The snare, we still got our coded remote controlled sound uh, reverse dot on there. Hardware is pretty much still the same. The model numbers, you know, they change slightly. Uh, the hi-hats change. There's a new design, a new Titan design. Our drum pedals are Pro Beat 6745s. He's moved up from the King Beats, or he's moved on from the King Beats, whatever you want to say. So we're, so we're using the Pro Beats now. Um, still have the same auxiliary hi-hat on the right. Uh, there's no more ride. There's no more ride symbol. Um, really? There's no more ride? So this tour... He's taken the ride symbol off. He's, he had it all the way up through Master of Puppets. This tour, no more ride symbol. Uh, That's, uh, yeah. is, I've never noticed that there's a lack of ride yeah. with Metallica. I mean, what's the story <laughs> behind not having a ride? Well, I heard, you know, now he has the China, the current day, he's using the China as a ride. He, I always heard that, he, you know, he didn't like the feel of it or he thought it was, oh, okay. he thought it was boring. So, so come in Justice for All touring, the stadium tour, the Monsters of Rock, the ride is missing. It'll be missing for a while till about 96. Also, the symbols are the, uh, the A Zildjian line, the medium crashes. We, we lost one of the Chinas. We lost the left side China, and he's just using the right side China now. Uh, I believe that that's a 20-inch Oriental, you know, China. Um, we still got the right side hats. Uh, we lost a crash symbol from the right side. It was four. We're down to three in order. Um, three on the right, two on the left. Two on the left. Hi hats on each side. Two hi hats. China, large China on his uh, on, on his, his right, right, which not a crazy amount of symbols. No. I mean, it's a lot of symbols. Yeah. But the, the but the middle's open. The as middle's as, open. Which didn't now. used to be the, the right. right. Yeah. From when he when he started when he was younger, the middle's open. It could be another thing. It could be like, hey, I want everybody to see me, or you know, yeah, now yeah, we're putting yeah. on a show, whatever it is. I won't speculate on that, but now it's all on the side. It's, it's all on the right side. It's been that for a right and left side. It's been that way for a while. So we did lose about three symbols. We're still using the Z dino beats. We still have that Z line at the time. Um, I should mention there's always been some bass drum anchors on the front of the kick drums to hold them in place. They've always been here. Um, since the Imperial star, let me re re rewind a little. The Ride sure. the Lightning error, he used those. They're still here. We have those. Um, and those would be like kind of like Gene Krupa. And those yeah. guys use just little like claws that would stop it from That's it. inching forward. Two little claws, two, uh, two points. They, uh, they tighten right to the hoop of the bass drum. Yeah. And it prevents them from moving. This kit, I got to say, is awesome. And just so we're all on the same page here, this is what's behind you. This is the kit you recreated that you're sitting in front of right now. Yeah, I did three of them. This is the uh, pretty much, they call it the Damage the damage Justice Tour Kit. This got is it. This is the Damage Tour Kit behind me. Pretty, mu cool. pretty much, I tried to keep it 99% uh, exact. Uh, you know, I like Minel symbols. That's me. <laughs> price and they drop the z line i like minor symbols so that's different but this this is it this is a great example of it yeah um beautiful really cool it's, it's that beautiful color you know i could see like if you could see some of the chrome when we when we look at that you know we yeah, let me like, bring this back into the picture you see how this is black this was just yeah. a prototype on this kit it was chrome and that's something like if you're you know you're really a gear nerd that you would notice from pictures yeah you know sure. this is chrome why didn't he paint this probably because you adjust it there and it does it'll sand the paint off so that that's what i think happened there why are these few pieces chrome and everything else is black yeah, um gotcha it is important to note that the symbol stands are all still chrome at this point snare stand is still chrome hi-hat stand that did change in the future but for this tour, you know, the hardware is chrome at this point. And it looks like we have a Danish flag and a monkey on the front. Yeah, there. let me let me bring that in, too, just uh, for ha-has. You know, this is... Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> that is identical. Talk, it is identical. Talk about a gear nerd. But anyway... Wow. So that is the actual monkey and to find something like there's there's no information on that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't really... I, it took me years just... I have a picture, you know, I have this picture and I have to look on eBay and check out, yeah. you know, all these uh, Facebook groups for stuffed animals and toys. I mean, he probably just grabbed it at a little like junk shop or souvenir shop and just, and just, and just threw it on there. So, yeah. but you know, when I try to replicate something, I, I, I want to do it, you know, as best I can. So, yeah. you know, if you're into gear, I'll, I'll tell you, that's a, that's a Wallace and Berry, uh, 
the the toy company's Wallace and Berry, and it's a seven inch orangutan, and it came <laughs> it came as a two piece with a larger one, and wow. you know, that's awesome. But you, that is about as that's you're you're doing it for real. Yeah. So it, hopefully that helps you. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but and yeah, there's a cool. there's a Danish flag on it. So yep. I don't know the particular size to use, but obviously we know there's a Danish flag, and yep. So you know this is this isn't justice for this is a Beautiful kit, beautiful kit. Awesome, Chris. Well, I guess, so as we've just kind of taken a little pause and discussed, I think now is a good time to break for a part two to be done later because we're getting into, it's the end of the 80s, uh, which is a big, you know, it's a kind of an I- iconic change. Everything, music changed, everything kind of changed there. A lot of cool kits coming up. Mm. Um, really quick, just a brief rundown. Why don't you tell people kind of a, a bullet point list of what we can expect in part two, uh, just of what we have coming up without getting into the details. Okay. Um, yeah. Oh, well, the 90s, we've got the uh, the real popular, the black and white kit from the Black Album. Uh, we have a retail kit to discuss. Um, and then we have the major change where Lars pretty much removes two toms and makes the kit smaller, you know, for the mid 90s yeah. and up until today. That's that's what's coming up. So there's there's quite a few changes. Yeah. So. Which I, I think we can probably get this done in, in, in two in two episodes, because I think we with the next time we can probably cram it all in there and then maybe we do a studio one down the road or something. But we'll see. And uh, um, before we wrap up, Chris, you've done these amazing kits. Do you want to like promote where people can see them or are you making them mainly for just for yourself or uh, Uh, you want to tell people where to find you on social media or anything like that? I'd love, I'd love for people to see that. I'd love to discuss them. You know, if you have any questions and I can help you build a replica kit, that's, that's what I love doing. Just discussing it. Like I'm doing with you today. This is kind of like, this is just what I do. I don't know why, but this is just what I do. So if you want to reach me pretty much all I have is the Instagram and I'm, uh, I'm Chris R Z 28 on Instagram. Um, I have some cool. videos, uh, pictures, you know, I, I'd love to get some kind of cover videos going, but you know, I'm kind of techno technologically. <laughs> that's a whole I, thing. Yeah, That's a whole thing. I don't know how to do. So if you want to find me, uh, check out the Instagram and shoot me a message. We'll talk. We'll talk about anything you want to talk and help you out any way I can. Cool. That's what it's all about. And that's what I love about this is, uh, I'm glad I, you know, um, through Billy Harrington that I, he connected me with you because I don't know, man. Sometimes like it's it's hard to find the right person and you don't want to ask the wrong person who comes on and doesn't really know a lot of info. And yes, there's, I'm sure, little tiny details that we'll figure out along the way and here and there. And, and that's why I love the comments. Again, if people have things that they want to talk about, comment on the episode and all that stuff. And I'm sure Chris will love to uh, yeah, hear it and we'll all learn and, hey, and all this stuff but if i miss something let me know i'm not yeah, which yeah. I, you're doing a great job i will say this right now on behalf of everyone this is a lot to sit there and rattle off years and years of drum sets and stuff and who knows maybe lars will see this someday <laughs> and, and nerd out about his own kits and stuff so imagine, imagine um, that right <laughs> yeah pretty cool well uh on that note uh chris thank you for being here my no friend problem. we will we will have a part two soon and we'll book it and get it scheduled and everything. And I'm looking forward to having you back Absolutely. on. Th- and thank you to everyone for watching and all that stuff. Th- so. Thanks for having me.